If you've been thinking about starting freelancing or you've been doing it for a while and you've been struggling to sort of get some momentum going or built up and you're looking for tips and tricks and ideas on how to get into it. A little while ago, I did an interview with Kyle Princeloo who teaches people how to freelance and this is the edited version of that. Now, normally these interviews, I try and get them down to like 30 minutes, but Kyle just kept on dropping tons and tons of really good information. So I want to leave all of that value in there. But I have put timestamps to all the parts that you might want to jump down to down below so you can sort of get to the different things that might be interesting you the most. Or of course, you can just watch the whole thing because as I said, uh, Kyle just kept dropping tons and tons of really awesome knowledge and I really appreciate the interview so thank you very much Kyle for for doing that I'll let him introduce himself a little bit more in just one second but I just want to say that at a few parts during the interview his his picture sort of goes a little wonky because of some connection issues and something I was trying that clearly didn't work it only happens maybe two times or three times um, so it's not too bad. It's just a few seconds here or there. But anyway, I just want to let you know to be expecting that when it does happen. And yeah, let's let's go and jump in and learn a little bit more about Kyle. And we're going to go into things like finding clients, pricing, and just tons of other things as well. So I really hope that you enjoy this interview. As you said, my name is Kyle Prinsloo or Kyle Prinsloo. And I'm from South Africa. Um, I'm a freelance developer slash business owner and also an educator. I enjoy teaching others and helping others to become freelancers. Um, I have a blog, um, studywebdevelopment.com, where I teach that. And also um, a few marketing agencies um, where we do service clients. And that's also a big part of our business and a big part of our focus this year to expand on that a whole lot more. Um, so that's pretty much a quick intro about who I am. Awesome. And you also have the website studywebdevelopment.com that you're a, a part of. Can you just give us a quick word on that as well? Sure. So I started um, studywebdevelopment.com in, uh, I think it was December 2015. So, um, well, uh, well, five plus years ago. And the whole focus of it was I was learning web development back then and I saw the potential of what it could be if you had this skill set. So I thought, okay, let me, sort of, let me sort of learn, but publicly learn. Um, so share some ideas that, that I had um, as I was learning. Uh, so it was very much a blog, very much almost like an accountability website in some, in some ways. Um, as I came across certain courses, I would recommend it as well. Um, as I was learning something, I would share it. And it sort of started from that perspective. And then it grew into, okay, now you've got web development as the knowledge or as the skill set, but now how do you make money from that um, besides from a job perspective? And that's when I thought, okay, let me, um, I'm getting involved with clients now. Let me sh sort of share what I know in terms of how I get the clients, how I charge my, for my services. Uh, the mistakes that I've made, and so on. So um, I'm so grateful today that it sort of grew into a helpful resource for uh, many, many people around the world. And it just started out of, you know, sort of a almost like an accountability um, blog in a way. So rewinding now from what you're up to these days to the very beginning, one thing that I get asked all the time um, is uh, when it comes to freelancing is what your education is and whether you studied specifically for it or if you're self-taught. So I, I left school early. Um, so so I'm, I'm what they would call a high school dropout. <laughs> um, so, so I went into... Um, I went into the self, um, or I can say I went into business, right? So um, it was a whole story um some of it most of it failed um i had no connections no no finances nothing i had to sort of do odd jobs just to sort of um, get by and i learned a lot from that eventually i um, took a loan from a few friends um, a small loan to study something called digital marketing um, and, and that was just a short course um, because I wasn't, you know, I didn't have a college um, level of education, so I couldn't qualify for a more advanced mm. course. So it was a three-month course, and I learned a lot from that. Um, eventually, I got a good job uh, in marketing. And uh, in short, I learned a lot there on the job experience through Udemy, through Google, through YouTube. So in short, um, most of my learning came through 
a lot of the reading on free resources or cheap resources like Udemy and very much on the job. So self-taught. And maybe if we, so, I mean, there you're saying everything, you know, very much self-taught, which is really awesome. Um, along the way of learning, were you working other, you know, were you doing something else before you got into the web development and how did you decide on that as where you wanted to go? And so I had a, many different jobs. I don't want to bore everyone about <laughs> yeah, the different yeah. types of jobs. <laughs> but um, I found myself accounting, which is quite ironic because I just passed accounting <laughs> in school. <laughs> so I don't know how I got the job, but but I got it. Um, and I was there for a while. And then uh, eventually I got a job in mm -hmm. IT. And I had no IT experience. Um, so I don't think it was tech knowledge. I was literally just holding um, the ladder. I think that's mm -hmm. you call it a ladder in the US, I think. Um, you know, a ladder for people to do installations, you know, CCTV networks and and various installations. Um, so I was very much almost an assistant, um, you know, in that regard. And I, I learned a few things from there. And that sort of catapulted me because I was earning such a low salary. That sort of forced me to, listen, I can't be, I don't want to use a harsh term, but let's just say screwing around. You know, I need to make something of my life. And I, and then I thought, okay, what am I interested in? And I thought, okay, I enjoy, I enjoy marketing. Um, I, do, I didn't have any experience, but I enjoy the psychology of marketing. And then that led me to um, learning a course on digital marketing. Then I went to, um, uh, in my career, as a, a marketing manager of quite a large company. So I was in charge of literally making them more money online by improving their website, by improve it, improving their marketing and all of that. And I was there for about three and a half years. Um, but after about two years, I thought, whoa, I'm married now. Um, I need to, my wife couldn't legally work. I needed to earn, you know, a much higher income to pretty much get by. And also it was like almost like a yearning inside that I just wanted to do something different. You know, I wanted to do something myself um, to be my own boss in a way and have my own responsibilities. And it was that at, at that moment where I thought, okay, what am I going to do? And I must say I've got the best wife in the world because she said, okay, why don't you study web development? And I thought to her and I told her and I said, that's just weird. I don't want to learn about all these, th th this weird language, you know, because I was exposed to it in, in, in my tech job uh, through these guys and, and they were coding websites and doing all that. And I was like, what are you doing? I'm not going to touch that, you know? And anyway, m my wife was persistent and she recommended a Udemy course. Um, I don't know if you know uh, Rob Percival. Rob Percival, he's, he's quite a well-known um, teacher on Udemy. And I took that course. And as they say, the rest is history. Um, but it started um, very Super much awesome. like that. Yeah, thank you. That was really interesting. Um, and then I guess... I know for some of the people I've been interviewing, they were working in, they had like an established job first. They got in, they studied web development. They either went to school for it or were self-taught, but then they landed their first jobs and then eventually decided to become a freelancer. Uh, in your, is it the same story for you or did you get into freelancing right away? So um, what I did was I, I, I wanted to do something where I was um, almost feeling, feeling a bit more, uh, like I was doing something important, right? Like I was making a difference, let's say. So because I saw the potential of, I had the marketing knowledge and I thought, okay, what goes well with marketing, which is uh, web development after ch chatting to my wife and actually realizing, wow, it actually goes well together extremely well. Now I could offer clients, um, a, 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 you know, a very good service, a very good package. Now I offer the website, which is a once-off, and then the marketing, which is a monthly retainer or monthly income. So in short, once I had the knowledge, and I'm talking very simple knowledge, just literally HTML and CSS that I could just create a website, a simple standard website, I knew that the marketing side was extremely important to get clients um, uh, and, and for sales for, this, for, for my clients. So I pitched that service. I immediately went to... Um, I don't know if you want to learn maybe about or want me to explain how I got my mm -hmm. first few clients, but in short, what happened was I pretty much after, literally after, after a month, uh, I just started trying to get clients. 
Um, and that, so it was uh, interestingly, after about a year, after I was getting clients freelancing on the side, I was actually matching my full time income. So it actually did, you know, pretty well. Um, and I was still there at the company for a while before I saved up a lot more and had more clients. And then eventually I moved into full time awesome. freelance. So, I mean, that does follow, you were mentioning, I'd definitely be interested to know on how you, you know, what steps you did to get those first clients. I think that's one of the hardest things for a lot of people um, is finding the first clients. I think there's a few stages along the way. It's hard, you know, you have to get those first ones, then you need that, you have to move mm -hmm. on from there because sometimes that's uh, once you're used to that. Mm -hmm. But um, I'd also be curious a little bit with that, like, I guess, oh, actually, I won't do a multi-step question. We'll start with just how did you actually get those first few clients? Sure. Um Okay, before I answer, I want to mm -hmm. maybe preface it to say that, look, um, because it worked for me, I'm not saying it's going to work for others, right? I mean, for others, it might be, they might have it easy or they might have it more challenging. Um, but but maybe you can just learn a few principles from my approach in how I started that first. So to get to it, um, I actually went on Fiverr. And before everyone, you know, just laughs or anything um what i did was i sort of approached it and looked at it like okay what is everyone doing how are they getting attention to get you know sales of their five dollar service or something and i thought okay how can i be different in that because a lot of people if you go on on the section like web development right and it would be like there are thousands of people to choose from and it's like Hmm. If I was the customer, I wouldn't. I wouldn't. I wouldn't find me. You know. I mean, you've got people who've got thousands of reviews and various other things. So I'm like, how can I sort of think about this a, a bit differently? So what I did was, instead of offering the direct service of web development, I actually offered a five dollar website analysis report. So what that was is, they would come on. I can't remember the exact category it was, uh, but uh, you, I can't remember it now. But in short, it was a, a website analysis report where I critiqued their website for $5, giving them conversion um, strategies. So in other words, hey, move this around here yeah, or do this or change the color of this or add this so that you will get more sales. And that was literally, literally my approach. And what I did also to stand out even further was I noticed that a lot of people, the, the good accounts had, instead of an image as their first image, they had a video. So I remember at the time I didn't have any money whatsoever. So I remember it cost me $84. I'll never forget that because it was a lot of money for me at the time. And I made the investment into a, an animated video intro. and. In short, that sold my services to say, hey, I'm Kyle. I will help critique your website to help you, you know, increase your sales and so on and so on. Order today to get started. And something very short and simple. And before I knew it, I got the notification on my phone at work and I was like, whoa, I got <laughs> nice, a sale. Yeah. You know, I, I was so excited. Yeah, definitely, yeah. <laughs> so um, the moment I got home from work, I literally got started on on this on this Fiverr project, and and um, what I did was I aimed to over deliver. So I would create a, I think it was a three or four page um, a w a word document, and I would just say, okay, this is what I would do. This is what I like. This is my suggestions. If you would like a more detailed report, I can help you for one hundred dollars. So that was almost like a wireframe, you know, almost like a visual uh, design of what I would recommend the website should be. And before I knew it, the guy, I upsold the guy. He's like, sure, I, I would have to go ahead with that. And I over-delivered again. I said, here's my visual design, every single page, you know, of the designs. And I just designed it on, I think, it was, I can't remember if it was Photoshop or, or Microsoft PowerPoint at the time. I'm talking uh, very simple and I had to just figure it out and just, you know, uh, make it work. So I just figured it out, learned on the job. I had no idea sort of what I was doing uh, in that sense, in the design sense, but I just figured it out and I made sure it was good. 
and I sent it through to him and I'm like, okay, now I've sent you the visual design. If you would like me to code this for you to make this design a reality, I'm going to charge you a thousand dollars. And before I knew it, they signed up to that. And it's, it's quite an amazing um, story um, uh, in a way because, because this client five years ago, maybe a bit over five years now, he signed up to this package. He signed up to eight more websites with me. And he's still oh. with me to this very day. Um, it's, quite a, it's quite amazing. And, and not only that, but he's on a monthly marketing retainer. Um, so, so if you really think of it and you boil it down, you know, that $5, you know, turned into, you know, a, a, a lot of income um, literally from, you know, a $5 report. So, so as I say, you know, the whole Fiverr sort of Upwork sort of freelancing platform, um, it's got this weird sort of approach and understanding that a lot of people think, you know, screw it, it's not going to work for me or why would I work for peanuts and so on and so on. But it, it depends at what stage you are. And my recommendation is always to try it. You never know what can come from it. The freelancing platforms is just one sort of avenue, right? Um, so uh, sorry, maybe good. I'm going Go on a bit it. of a tangent now, but um, sure. So, um, uh, so in short, that's pretty much how I got my very first client. And I got quite a few um, decent clients from, from Fiverr. Then before I knew it, they started telling their friends and it sort of, and the, the referrals I got from them uh, really helped me a lot. And then I thought, Hmm, how can I start getting clients in other ways? So I, I started doing, you know, the cold email approach where I just started emailing a, a lot of random different businesses. Um, I started doing Google ads. I started doing LinkedIn ads. Um, I started doing calls Sorry, excuse me, and um, and Facebook ads. I literally did like everything, and <laughs> some some worked, some didn't. Um, and over the years, I've started to refine my approach a lot more, and I've started to see what type of uh, marketing strategies and marketing channels actually yield and produce um, the best ROI in terms of what am I what am I investing in terms of my time and my money. Am I ultimately getting clients from it? And I've sort of figured out a decent approach to it. Um, and no, yeah, sorry. sorry, I'm going on a bit of a tangent, but that's yeah, pretty but much it. Mm. I think just a nice follow up from there, because you've been talking a lot about marketing and you do have a, more of a marketing background than the other people I've talked with. Um, but when it comes to your day to day, how much time for you would actually be development work versus marketing versus email and just housekeeping and accounting and like all those different things? Um, cause I think, you know, when we think freelancing people think, Oh, I'm my own boss. I just get to develop all day long. I don't have to worry about anybody else, but I don't think that's necessarily the reality. Mm, for sure. For sure. Um, okay. So, so, um, my life right now is is a lot more, how can I say, um, easier um, or, or let's say fortunate um, right now because um, at the beginning I was doing all of the work, you know, and then eventually um, my wife, because she couldn't mm -hmm. um, work at the time, so she started learning uh, web development and she eventually helped me and also for the content writing for clients. So, so, so in short... Um, we would offer clients the web development as well as the marketing services such as SEO, ranking on Google, Google ads, Facebook ads, LinkedIn ads, uh, designs, email marketing, infographics, content writing, literally the full package, right? So there's obviously a lot of elements that go there. And now what I found was, whoa, I'm doing all of the work. I need to try and find a way that I can sort of step back a bit more uh, and also run a profitable business. And the way to do that was I started outsourcing a lot. And I found a lot of contractors to work with on Upwork, on Fiverr, on Hubstop Talent. Um, and to this day, we work with quite a few contractors. But um, but now we are actually, um, I think, uh, well, from this month, uh, sorry, when, at, at least five or six um, uh, full-time staff. Um, I think yeah, around five or six at the moment, um, and then quite a few contractors that uh, that we work with, 
And um, we've all got our different roles, right? Like, for, for example, my wife does pretty much almost all of the web development now. We've got customer service. We've got salespeople. Uh, we've got account accounting side. We've got, um, yeah, there's, uh, there's a few different things. So now, from for example, from my side, I just focus on more the advanced um, marketing side. I just focus a lot more on SWD, um, you know, creating content. Um, I focus a lot more on setting up the structures and the technical strategies on uh, generating uh, clients for us um, and um, sort of just growing it and keeping the wheel going. Uh, maybe if I can also just add so, sort of what we do now. So, uh, uh, so we do a, a lot of client work. Um, we do um, obviously the SWD, the study development, you know, the teaching and the content side. Um, and then a, a big portion right now is um, actually e-commerce. We, we got involved um, uh, about two years ago into dropshipping, and that's actually doing very well for us. Um, uh, that's actually, uh, you know, if I can just be transparent, that's actually our biggest income uh, generator. Um, so, so it's doing very well. Uh, so so we, we've got a bit of a diverse um, portfolio, mm -hmm. um, if I can say that. Um, and, and what I'm doing now, I'm sort of finding a balance of, um, work and play, you know, because I don't want to be working, um, you know, eight to five, you know, the rest of my life. So I've sort of structured things along with my business partner, Johannes, you know, we're sort of looking at this plan of like, I don't want to be working, you know, more than three hours a day, uh, three, four hours a day, even though I enjoy my work, I want to be, you know, focused on my family or I want to be, you know, playing tennis, uh, you know, or, or something like that. So, so now it's like, how can we do things um, keeping that in mind? You know, so we sort of step, slowly starting to step away a bit more. Um, and, but right now I'm focusing very much on the growth aspect um, of keeping the business going and getting more clients. Yeah, and that, that's awesome. And it actually, it corresponds a bit with the first interview I did was with Niall and he's in uh, Ireland, but a little bit similar. The starting was different, but when it came to, you know, you, as you grew, it was mm -hmm. fine, you know, you're not doing it all on your own and you sort of hit a limit, I think. And it's when you start bringing in other people to work with you, I think is an mm -hmm. important step in something. Again, I think people always think freelancing, I'm on my own, I do my own thing, but it's more about, it doesn't have, you're not making the next, you know, fortune 500 company necessarily, but it is, a, you know, you're developing mm -hmm. something that should have room for growth. And at one point you need to bring on other people to be able to mm -hmm. do that. When it comes to the branding and sort of like how you're, you know, your forward facing side, uh, I'm just curious on like how you've built up your brand. What type of, you know, is it a, obviously it's, I think it's a little bit different now as your website or as your company has reached new levels, but maybe earlier on when you were just by yourself, when it came to branding yourself, like how would people find you? Do you have a website with a portfolio? Did you have a different approach? Obviously you, you were doing outreach as well and you had Fiverr um, and other things, but I'm just curious mm. how you sort of would, would do that to promote yourself. Sure. So, so I just want to confirm, are you referring to, you know, getting clients? Yeah. Um, like say if, if a client were to find your website okay. or if they're on Fiverr and they, I don't, I don't know enough about Fiverr, but mm. if they can click through to find out more about you, just like how sure, you would sure. brand yourself and show yourself for clients mm. when they were seeing you, I guess is, yeah. Sure. So, um, so what I did was, I think is incredibly important um, in today's time. Um, as I say, the freelancing platforms is one channel to get clients. That is actually not my recommendation. My final recommendation is your own website. And we say that again, it's your own website. And there's various reasons for that because you can control this. You cannot control Upwork or Fiverr. You, you might get a suspension or something and then what? You know. So at least have something that you can control such as a portfolio website. And this is where you can really showcase your skills. So you, you know, have a blog, you have case studies of what you've done for clients. And in short, you've got this nice website, you've got your SEO going, which is a big topic, and I think I'll get to that now. But you've got this nice website, but now you need the marketing and the sales to get to this website. And that's where the advertising comes in. So now you're generating targeted leads you know, interested um, uh, potential clients coming to your website, now you need to persuade them that you are the answer to their problem and you have the solution to help their business grow. That is your portfolio website there. 
Um, the portfolio website is incredible because, uh, I mean, for example, we've got we've got three um, websites. When I talk about a portfolio website, I'm also referring to you know like an agency website in that sense. So it could be your own if you want to brand it yourself, or if you want to brand it as a company. And we've got three. We've got one in the um, in the medical niche. We've got one in the um, therapy niche. And we've got one in more like a generalist sort of uh, niche um, where we service you know more higher paying clients. And in short, it's incredible how clients find these websites. Even when last year, towards the second half of last year, I didn't want to take on any more clients because we were just too busy, I turned everything off. And it's amazing how many leads we got, um, purely because they found our website through various other means, maybe it's through referrals or maybe it's through social media or whatever it is, but where most of them came from was SEO. And that's the fact of ranking on Google. And it is highly underrated. I mean, if you can get your blog or your website, your you know your portfolio website to rank on Google, wow, uh, I mean, you're going to get a lot of leads. And... And the way to do that, I recommend is to niche down um, because there's often a lot, a lot less competition in that. Um, and um, sorry, um, maybe I'm here. But um, yeah, I mean, in short, I just want to highlight how important it is to have a portfolio website because that's definitely the route I would go to, uh, you know, and use today. That's something we are using even more so today. But if I had to start off from scratch, I would definitely focus on this a lot sooner awesome uh yeah the idea of having multiple niches um i think i was going to ask about about the importance of a niche so um obviously good timing on that mm -hmm. and I, I do think that idea of having like multiple websites that are targeting different niches that you could help um i think is is a super cool idea mm -hmm. and a good idea that a lot of people probably don't um don't think about mm, i agree i agree um yeah. So next, I guess, is one of the more fun topics and one of the ones that people have a lot of trouble with as well, which is uh, pricing and figuring out how much to charge. Mm. Um, I know that there's lots of different price like ways to tackle it. Uh, there's finding an hourly rate, estimating how long the project mm. will take, try and you know, do that game. There's the idea of like value based pricing, uh, mm -hmm. there's just having a project based pricing. Mm. So I'm curious, maybe how you how mm. or maybe we could start with how you started with it and maybe where you're at now and the evolution to, mm. to what you've gotten to. Sure. Sure. So um, before I sort of answer that, I just want to say that pricing is mm -hmm. a massive topic. Um, and, and I wrote a very, very detailed guide on this. So uh, um, mm -hmm. if you want to really go through it in a lot of detail and mm -hmm. understand the breakdown and the psychology of it, you can literally just type in, I think you just type in like how to charge for a website or something on Google and study web development should be somewhere up there towards the top and just go through that article because um, it's quite in depth um, because obviously, you know, speaking it out, you know, you're sort of talking generally speaking. So um, to get your answer now, um, what we do is we do not charge by the hour. We do not. Um, I never have, and I never will. I believe that um, it's it's actually it's, it's actually not an efficient way of doing it because it actually, if you really think it through, it actually encourages it encourages you to be inefficient yeah. because at the end of the day, if you're getting uh, you know if you're getting paid, let's call it fifty dollars an hour. Some people get ten dollars, some people get one hundred fifty, but whatever. Let's just call it fifty dollars an hour. Now you know. Whoa. I need money. I'm low on cash. You know, um, this should actually take me one hour of work, but I know this client is going to pay $400, you know, or $300. So no problem. I'm just going to take my time because they're paying for my time, not the outcome. And that's sort of a very nugget, simplified overview of it. There's obviously a lot more pros and cons to it and all of that. Um, but in short, we do not charge by the hour. We do, as our first priority, is charging um, value-based pricing. And then we go to fixed pricing or project-based pricing. So generally speaking, I, um, I, I don't know if you're familiar with the, with the value-based uh, pricing. I method. know about it, but maybe just a really quick overview for anybody who doesn't know. Sure. Sure. 
So, so in short, here's the summary of a value-based price. You are essentially charging your price for what the potential return could be for the business. In terms of, let's say you, and uh, it's interesting, I actually posted a tweet um, uh, recently, and I think it sort of boils down and sort of explains the concept. So let's say, for example, you, you know that if you had to make this change to a client's website, it will easily increase their sales, let's say, by $50,000 extra for the whole year. You just know it because based on your experience or based on your knowledge, you know that if you had to change a call to action year or add a video year or change the layout year or change the colors or whatever, you know that they could increase their sales. Now, this business comes to you and they say, hmm, you know what, John? You know what, Sally? I want you to quote me on making this change to this page or the checkout page or something. Now you say, no, no problem. It's going to take me an hour. So you charge your hourly rate, $50 or $100. But yet they are making you know, a massive amount of money for your short amount of time. The point is they should be paying you for your expertise and the outcome that your expertise will result in. So therefore... If, you, if they are going to result, you know, in let's say $50,000 extra in sales, you can easily, easily charge $1,000, $2,000, $3,000, and so on, because it's relative to what they will be making. Um, I don't know if you want an example on, on a website, you know, in, in quoting from, from scratch, but, um, but in short, I mean, I mean, I mean the value-based pricing model is something that, you know, you need to get a mental shift on because, uh, you know, you're, you're not making a website. People think it's just a website. You're effectively selling a marketing solution or a solution to a business that can generate more sales, whether that's an existing website or whether that's a new website. If you can improve it and you can help them get more sales, you are not um, doing yourself justice and you're, and you're not doing the business justice, you know, to charge an hourly rate. Um, the, uh, yeah, I've got I've got quite strong opinions on an hourly rate. Um, <laughs> I don't want to. I don't want to. <laughs> you know, uh, um, I'm just going to sort of leave it at that. But 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 in short, you know, the, the value based pricing pricing method is actually a win win because you are getting paid based on your expertise and not based mm-hmm. on your time. You do not want to get paid based on your time because, let's say, for example, hypothetically, if you are always getting paid based on your time, you have to work from eight until five. Let's say if you don't want to do that, now you can say, fine, I'm going to work from 8 until 12. But now you've got existing clients and you usually charge $50. Good luck telling them you're going to charge $100 now because you think your time is worth more. You know, it doesn't work that way. You need to start by charging value-based pricing. That's the only way to step out away from the time and to charge based on your value and your output that you're delivering to the business. Would you say if somebody's just getting started in freelancing? Because I think that's like I think I think a lot of people see the see. I think everybody would agree with what you're saying as you're hearing it. But if you've never charged that way before, or if you're just getting in into practice. freelancing, sure. I think if you've been working in the industry, you can sort of have an idea of the value. Um, but if you're just sort of starting off, um, you know, I guess sometimes maybe you make a mistake along the way, or just like if you're. You know, is, do you have any tips or tricks um, that somebody could use to sure. just to get started with it, with that type of idea? So um, I made a lot of mistakes when when I first started freelancing, right? And and if I'm sort of speaking, you know, a bit um, sort of passionately on this topic, um, I know in theory it can sound very nice, and then all of a sudden it can become overwhelming, especially from a beginner's perspective, to think, whoa, you know. <laughs> slow down a bit you know um i'm not there yet um i'm sort of a beginner i'm sort of just getting started in that and i'm with you right um so so let's just acknowledge that that's sort of the the best mm-hmm. approach in the long term even in the medium term now what can we do in the short term so <laughs> i know this might sound a bit weird but it <laughs> it, it very much b- begins with your mindset of how you view a website. Because if you just view a website as a commodity sort of off-the-shelf mm. product, 
you are always, always going to be considered as a generalist or as someone who can be replaced, right? It's like, oh, you know, you charge $1,000 for a website. No, you know what? So-and-so down the street charges $900. Well, you're selling the same thing. It's a website. I'm just going to go for them, you know? And I think if you if you start doing that and you view it like that, you're always going to be, uh, you know, on the on the race to the bottom in charging the lowest fees just to get the client, right? And that is not conducive for anyone. I mean, that's not good. You do not want to be in that game. So now it comes to okay, what can you do? How can we sort of um, approach this and sell this? And it, again, it boils down to what you are pitching, what you are selling. If you really believe that you are selling something that is not an off-the-shelf product, that is something that can uh, produce more sales, you will then change your way of selling it and believing in it to justify the price. And then, okay, so that's one aspect that I want to mention. The other aspect is confidence. Now, <laughs> I, I, I do have to mention this because, because, and again, it sounds so simple, but I'm just laying the foundation first. Because uh, it's amazing, when I first started phoning clients on the phone, <laughs> I, I wish I could get a recording because I remember, I remember one of the first few calls, I, w- I would say, you know, like, hey, I'm Carl. Um, 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 uh, but, and then I put, I put the phone down. <laughs> so um, I just got so nervous. I just couldn't do it. I just could not do it at all. And now over the years, obviously, you know, you get more experience, you get sort of used to clients and the questions they ask and the rebuttals they have and the objections they have and all of that. And you sort of know what you are delivering is working. So that sort of helps in your confidence levels. So this is a process, right? This whole process of like starting to uh, started, starting to go perfect with value-based pricing and perfect with charging the right price, that's not going to happen. You know, it's going to take time. It's going to take a few clients. It's going to take a few stuff ups, but that's the way that you learn through this process. Um, but uh, I would say, I would say, to a beginner, right? Just some practical nuggets and some practical takeaways on this. Um, I don't know if you know. A lot of people disagree with me on this, but this is my approach. I'm starting out from scratch. What I would do is I would get uh, I would get a um, I would focus on the generalist niche for now. I would just try and take any client and all clients just for the first two or three clients. Once you've got a few clients, then I would focus on niching down, you know, your services based on certain clients that you work with or based on certain potential that you see and so on. But I would get a a portfolio website. I would offer my services and say, I would not say, hey, I'm a web developer. He has my knowledge. I've got 67% JavaScript knowledge. I've got 82 HTML, you know. Uh, unlike you, 100% <laughs> CSS, but, but let's just ignore <laughs> uh, um, You know, don't do that type of stuff. What you need to be doing is you need to say, you need to start it off by saying something like, um, how can I say it? Um, I help businesses get more sales. Or you can say, um, focus on running your business while I focus on growing your business. You know, so so in effect, you are selling, you know, the outcome of your service. You're not saying, hey, I make websites, you know, or hey, I'm a website designer. And yes, not a lot of people will agree with me, but this is just my approach. Um, so, so I would pitch it like that. And then what I would do is, this is very crucial, very, very crucial. Whichever route you go, if you decide to say, fine, I'm going to be a website designer, I'm going to say, hey, I'm a website designer. I can help you build a website. I don't agree with that approach, but let's say you do that and all versus you go with my approach. Either way, either way, view it like you're a potential client. What do you want to see? What do you want to see? A newbie uh, person just saying, hey, I can make you a website or hey, I can help your business grow. Or do you want to see someone like, whoa, I've just helped these two other businesses grow. I can help do the same for you. Who do you think you would choose if you were the business owner? You would choose someone with experience. And that's what you need to do. So now you need to get projects. And when I say projects, I know that might seem intimidating and so on and so on. And there's various ways to get clients and all of that. But the first two projects, I'm a big advocate of doing work for free just to get some work under your belt. And I'm not saying indefinitely. I'm just talking to get for the first 
to clients so that you can show an example of websites you've created, an example of websites that you've helped a client, and you get their testimonial, you get their reviews so that you can put it on your website because that is the social, um, how can I say, uh, uh, that builds confidence and trust uh, that a potential client can trust in you to deliver for work for them. And then that justifies you standing out from everyone else because now you've got some experience and you're not just selling an off-the-shelf product. And once you've got that, that sort of system going, once you've got your first paying client and your second paying client and your third and your fifth, then you're onto something very, very nice because then you can scale, then you can grow, then you can outsource tasks, then you can niche down and so on and so on. So that has potential. But to get there, you need to show some experience. And the hardest part is, is the beginning. The hardest part is the first one or two real clients. But my sort of takeaway, if you can take this as a beginner, is to create a, a, um, a website mm -hmm. portfolio, is to build some experience and get show what you can do, not what not talk about it. You know, show show it, show it, um, and then from there focus on getting clients and growing. And if I can add, do not view this as a sprint. There are many people who make good income within three months or six months freelancing. But some people take a year. Some people take two years. There was one stage where I almost gave up myself. You know, where I just thought, whoa, it's just too much. It's just taking a bit slow. I'm so glad I persisted because the compound effect, I mean, now eventually when you've got a few clients and especially when you've niched down, clients come to you, you know, and you can pretty much name your price. The only way to get there is once you build experience and you get used to and you learn on the job, you know. I uh, actually tweeted out today, I said something like, you know, um, if you worry about um, getting everything right, you know, making everything perfect, you're procrastinating. Yeah. The point is just to figure out the overall ideas and concepts to start, to make something happen and to learn on the job. That's how you really learn. That's how you really get experience. So don't worry about finding out the smaller details and making sure this, making sure that. Just focus on getting clients. Literally just focus on getting clients and the rest will fall into place. Just uh, as some of the questions start coming in, a few questions about clients. And, you know, we've been talking a lot about marketing, a lot about finding clients, pricing. Um, but And mm. you did mention it early on um, with your first client that you were over delivering a lot to help with. A, it gives them a reason to come back to you for that next thing that you'd be charging more money for. Mm. And it, it does help for referrals. Uh, do you have any other advice when it comes to dealing with clients, especially early on um, for people and just, you know, whether it's making sure that they're coming back or getting referrals um, or mm. anything else like that, that you could give mm. information on would be great. So, um, yes, I, I, I would say, obviously, the, obviously the standard answer is, you know, communicate well, mm -hmm. over deliver, all of that. that good. Um I would say that what I've what I've seen um, freelancers do well and not do well, and sort of what I would suggest is what what we've been doing. I think works pretty pretty well, and and this is what we also teach to say that most people only focus on the on the once off service, such as the website, and, and that's great, right? I mean, you can charge. A good amount of money for it. I know plenty of guys who do, and they do really well. Congrats. But I keep thinking, and I, th you know, just think this through a bit. Is there maybe a better approach to this? Can you not do the once off plus make monthly income from this client? Because remember, it's, 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 it's very difficult to get new clients. But once you've got a client, keep them. And in essence, if you get a client and you're offering a once-off service plus a marketing service, you're controlling the whole sphere of how they are generating results. And hopefully you can get them results. We can, uh, In short, you just need to learn the skill set or outsource the skill set or whatever. But in short, you need to get your clients results. And I believe the best way of doing that is to offer a once-off service as well as handle the monthly marketing service. Because let me maybe illustrate this in a different way. Let's say you are um, a website developer and you offer websites only to clients. You don't know how to do marketing. You are too scared to do the marketing. There are plenty of people like you, so do not worry. 
I'll get I'll get you a solution on how you do that now. But let me just illustrate this point. Now you charge ten thousand dollars for this website, which is a great amount of money for a website. That's really excellent. Now you get this client. Great. What about next month? Now you have to rely on another client, another ten thousand or five thousand or eight thousand, however much you want or you need as a salary. And now you need another client the next month and another client mm-hmm. and so on and so on. And some people make it work. Some people do it very well. But now, is there not a better way if you look at it from an annual perspective? Instead of charging $10,000 that you're making from this client, our approach and the, and the approach that I teach would be instead of charging $10,000, charge $5,000 for the website, right? Charge $5,000, but then you charge let's say $1,500 a month for monthly marketing services. And I went into you know the digital marketing, the SEO, the content writing, the, digit, the, the AdWords, the Facebook, the infographics, the email marketing, and so on. And you offer that as a service. And that way, it's interesting. If you, if you take the calculation, $1,500 times 12, that's $18,000 a year. Plus the five thousand, that's twenty three thousand dollars a year. So uh, think of it this way: Would you choose ten thousand dollars once off or yeah. twenty three thousand? You know, <laughs> for, for the year, and and that's sort of the the approach that I'm, that I want to get at and leave people. Again, the finer details we can talk about. You can ask follow up questions. You can. I'm more than happy to help on you know Twitter or something. Kevin's also more than happy to help anything. So no problem. But just understand this concept of like. Don't leave money mm-hmm. on the table. It's a win-win solution because you can help the client and they can pay you for it. So you might as well offer a complete package, the once-off and the monthly marketing. So that's pretty much my takeaway. I just want to say that, um, you know, yes, you can make the once-off work, but my suggestion is to do both. Right. Yeah, awesome. And I think that also leads to like the idea of having a, actually having a consistent income instead of just constantly sort of chasing the next the next thing you know. yes and i think that's always the the worst case so yeah that's really good um miss spunky has asked at the beginning of your career did you ever feel discouraged by the number of different disciplines like the tools languages you know we're talking a lot you have you're talking about marketing we're talking about building websites these days i think one advantage back in the day is it was a lot simpler to make a website there's so many different possible stacks and different things to consider um these days as well, um, you know, for somebody who's looking at it going, there's so much to do. Do you have any advice, I guess, is the what we're getting to? Yes, I do. And, and I love this question because it's such a common question. And I've almost got to the point now where I actually get so upset in a way of like the, um, the type of teaching that a lot of people say. It's just too overcomplicated, right? My my advice to you is that Miss Funky <laughs> yeah, or, right. or someone whoever else is also interested in this is to not overcomplicate it. Please do not overcomplicate it. There are thousands of different frameworks and uh, you know CMSs and platforms out there, um, and it's just overwhelming and confusing. When I first started, I was really overwhelmed. I don't know where to go, what to do. But once I understood the concept of HTML and CSS, people laughed at me. But I thought, whoa, that's all I need to know, HTML and CSS. I can just create static websites, and that's good enough for me. My advice now would be to not overcomplicate it. And if you want to focus on freelancing, you do not need to know JavaScript. Let me make it clear. You do not need to know it. It is not a requirement. Is it helpful? Perhaps. But where I would say that most of the time and the focus comes in that you can generate an income with this knowledge is understanding how to make a website. Let me say that again. How to make a website. How you make it, the tool is not important. It is not important, the tool. How you make it is up to you. As a suggestion, it could be HTML and CSS, like Tailwind or um, Oh, I mean, there's so many other ones I, I went blank, like CSS Grid and some of, the, some of these other ones, Bootstrap and all the rest. Um, and But then you can also make use of CMS or no-code co- no um, website builders, such as Webflow, such as WordPress, 
Um, uh, Shopify is also a good one to niche down and offer e-commerce Shopify, Shopify websites. And let me say this, it might sound so simple, but I know plenty of businesses and people, freelancers who generate incredible incomes mm -hmm. through this method. I myself who have no idea how to code in PHP or React or Angular or all these other fancy frameworks. But I can tell you now that we deliver for our clients based on simplified knowledge and whatever we whatever we need because we know that it's just about an important conversion-centered website. If I can add to that, so now you know that, I would also suggest learning um, a CRO, conversion rate optimization. So that is where you almost learn the psychology of creating a website. Anyone can create a website. Your nine-year-old niece can create a website. What differentiates you from her? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Right? It's a valid question. You know, um, so think about that. You know, if you really think about, okay, I'm, I'm going to create a website, but I'm thinking of the user that's going to use this website. I understand the psychology of the layout of if I had to add a checkout like this or, or add a button like this. And there are so many examples of like how one button could generate a million dollars or whatever mm -hmm. in additional sales. Um, if you want to uh, just Google an interesting case study, just, just type in the Amazon button case study. It's incredible. It generated hundreds of millions of dollars extra just by changing one word on a button. So that's the psychology of a website. Now you get colors. Now you get layout. Now you get all of that. So that's important. Then I would also suggest a digital marketing. It is incredibly helpful to learn this, whether, whether it's getting your own clients, it helps you get your own clients, but it also helps you get uh, more sales for your clients. So it's almost a win-win solution. And uh, maybe I can add this because it might seem a bit overwhelming and all of that. Um, you don't necessarily need to know all of the work. That is okay. I and we outsource plenty of tasks you can do the same and I advocate for it. If you are not interested in offering, you know, marketing services for a client, just focus on the website, just make a good website. But then if they do ask for marketing services, don't say no, just say yes. And you will, you know, try and find out a friend who can help you and you charge the client a higher amount and you, and you pay your friend that much. So you make some profit on that. So you project manage the service mm -hmm. as well. So um, how can I say like, uh, um, it's quite complex in a way, but don't get overwhelmed. Don't try and overcomplicate it. Just start with how to make a website. If you can make a website, you can start selling your services. Sarah sure. Sararf22 is asking um, about platforms to find work on. So things like Upwork, uh, Fiverr, People Per Hour. Mm. Um, if there's, I mean, you mentioned, uh, we mentioned a couple off the top. Is there any that you would recommend that people mm. still do use or that you still have any experience with? So, um, right now I cannot speak from experience for myself, right? Um, um, although, um, I can speak from what I've seen mm -hmm. work for others and yes, I would recommend just at least try Upwork, at least try Fiverr. Also the approach that I, that I mentioned earlier on, don't be the generalist approach. I'm a web developer. Um, you know, th then you're swimming in a broad ocean and you pretty mm -hmm. much won't get clients. Try and niche down, try and, you know, pitch it a bit differently. As I mentioned earlier, um, Hubstaff talent is, is very good. Um, you can also try LinkedIn. Mm -hmm. I know, um, uh, D Danny, I mean, I mean, Danny joined earlier, Danny Thompson. You can check out his LinkedIn. Uh, he's got great advice on, mm -hmm. on LinkedIn there. Um, a great resource. Also, if I can add a very interesting way of getting clients is, is Facebook groups. Um, I, I mean, uh, uh, for example, if you had to join small businesses in your area and you just happen to just sort of add value in, um, you know, this sort of business chat that people talk, talk in, it's, 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 about, it's, it's bound to happen that someone's going to say a marketing question or a website question. After you've added value in it, you can say, hey, mm. I can help you, you know, and then you pitch your services. That also helps a lot, the Facebook groups as a platform. Um, so just something to consider. Awesome. Uh, a really good question here from Brent. Um, he's asking, uh, when it comes to trying to find the value for a product um, and discovery, when you're talking with the client and doing discovery to find out what they really need, that mm -hmm. sometimes it's hard to talk to the the business owner or the, the the client about money, and they you know they sometimes are hesitant on the money side to start bringing it up. 
he hmm. sees that as a warning sign of them just wanting the cheapest price and not yes. somebody who's willing to pay more for value. Yes. Um, yeah. Yes. So. Yes. Great. So, um, Brent, great, great, great question. And this is something that, that I've learned over the years in dealing with stingy clients. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, clients who literally just waste your time, who do not, do not understand the value, who want to pay like $100 mm -hmm. for a website. Um, you know what I mean? So how you do that is very simple, very simple. And I boil it down to asking one question so that you don't waste your time. And man, I can tell you, I'm, I've wasted <laughs> days of my life, uh, by, by, you know, by wasting time and so on and so on. And, I, and now, immediately, if I get the sense that a client is wasting my time, I ask them a simple question. I say, do you have a budget set aside for this project? And is it at least over X? Now, X, the amount, is whatever you desire as the minimum amount. Before you even talk value-based pricing, before you even talk anything, this is the minimum amount you think in your mind you're willing to accept for this website. So, for example, let's say you get the feeling, you know, they, they might, they, you know, they're very low on budget or something, and you want to at least get I'm just, maybe you want $3,000 for this website, right? So you say, do you have a budget set aside? I mean, uh, yeah, do you have a budget set aside for this project? And is it at least over $3,000? So you started on the, you, you don't say, is it exactly? You say, is it at least over the minimum amount that you would like for the project? Um, when you're trying to dial in on the value for them or based on their project, is there a way to not... They say you don't want to lose them along the way if all of a sudden like the number seems really high and they're just, you know, immediately the in their mind, you know, if you if you throw out a big number and they were expecting a much smaller number, let's say, or say you say, say in the case, mm -hmm. even there where you say at least three thousand dollars and in their head, they were thinking five hundred. Mm -hmm. Is there a way to recoup that or is yes. that just OK? I'm you know, if if the is there a time when you just cut cut ship right away, you're out of there mm -hmm. or is there a way to try and sure. Sure. make them realize that it's worth that much? Good question, and and I, th I think in these cases it depends who you ask because s some people might say, you know what, you mm -hmm. deserve more than that, you know, uh, just say goodbye, you know, and say boom, 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 done. But there are more variables mm -hmm. than that, you know. You need to consider. Look, do you need the money? <laughs> um, you know, um, if you do, you'll literally mm -hmm. take anything, you know. So um, it's quite complex in in that regard. So in this case. If, but this is where you really need to use your intuition because if you feel that this is going to be a very mm -hmm. difficult client and they just want the lowest amount possible and you just got a weird feeling, I would suggest mm -hmm. not taking it. I know it might sound hard, especially if you need money, but I would suggest you not. If you feel that this client is genuine and sort of like, whoa, um, like, I, that's a bit out of my price range. When they use words like, oh, that's just a little bit more than I expected or something, um, th that can be a good thing, especially if you need the money, right? Because then then that's when you have the value-based pricing with them. And then that's when you explain your mm -hmm. value to them and say, look, you know, um, this is an investment. This is not an expense. You are going to potentially increase your sales by X, Y, Z due to my changes. You look at your current marketing, look at your current advertising. It's doing all right, but I can see so much potential. I can see at least a 20% increase in your sales. Um, maybe we can talk about how I come up with those numbers and whatever a bit later because that's often a follow-up question. Um, you know, how you sort of figure out if you're going to make a, res a difference in their business and so on and so on. Um, but um, uh, it comes to the education side. They they obviously don't understand the value in your expertise and their budget is this low. But then there's another solution to this. And this is where I think a lot of people go wrong. They only offer one price. They only offer one price and one solution. I found that this is not right. What you should do is you should offer three options, three website uh, pricing options. And if you do want, um, you know, website proposal template, um, I've got it on my website. You can just download it there. So um, it's, it's literally the template that we use. 
So for example, let's say they look, they say, whoa, that's too expensive. Your next follow-up question should be, how much were you expecting to pay? Because if they say 500 and you say 3,000, whoa, that's mm -hmm. a big difference, right? I mean, that's just like, but if they had to say, for example, look, I mean, the maximum we were willing to pay or we were budgeting was one and a half thousand, you know, mm -hmm. that happens. I mean, that's happened with us, with us and that still actually continues to happen. We handle it a little bit differently now, you know, but, but let's say when we, at the beginning, we would try and take mm -hmm. every client we could, you know. So, so, so in, that, in that situation, what you do is you offer three pricing solutions. You might offer a website for um, one and a half thousand. You might offer option two, which would be a website and some marketing improvements for, let's say, uh, two and a half thousand. And you might offer option three, uh, more advanced website changes and a better web, uh, uh, marketing setup for, let's say, four and a half thousand. And what you are doing there, let me ask you this question. How would you make a $10,000 watch or $10,000 Rolex look affordable? And the solution is you just put it next to a $50,000 mm -hmm. Rolex, right? Because you're literally price anchoring. And that's what you're doing when you do three pricing options. You're making the $1,500 option look affordable and you explain it in the, and you benchmark it off your more expensive price and your more expensive price. Obviously, there's a lot more to it. I'm mm -hmm. just simplifying it. Um, so that's my advice awesome. on that. Super. One last question that I can see coming in the chat is from Red Law asking um, about uh, e-commerce platforms. Um, and you were mentioning you were doing that. So I guess mm. just a quick, uh, he's, he did mention WooCommerce mm. and Shopify. Um, so if you have opinions on either yes. of those or any other platforms. Mm. Sure. So, so um, my recommendation now is to use WooCommerce. Um, that's something that we pretty much use a lot. Um, yes, we've got experience in Shopify and OpenCart um, and uh, Magento and all of that. But my eighty twenty answer is you can't go wrong mm -hmm. with WooCommerce. Perfect. Great. Um, so yeah, I mean, I, I don't. If anybody else has any questions, uh, feel free to drop them in the chat. Uh, I will take the the little time now just to let you know that Kyle here, uh, other than just freelancing, we mentioned it at the beginning, but he also has the website studywebdevelopment.com, uh, which offers a ton of, uh, or it's a, a big bundle that helps teach people about freelancing and to get into freelancing. Maybe you can mention uh, a little bit more about it now. Oh, sure. Um, so so this bundle is it is in essence um, a valuable resource um, to help people um, interested in freelancing become freelancers. It has a community. It has almost everything that I've learned over the years as a freelancer and still as a freelancer condensed in, into one affordable, once-off price package. And I'm so thankful. Um, I mean, Kevin and I spoke about it earlier about our products and all of that and it's, uh, I'm just very grateful. It's, it's really doing very well um, and, and it's highly rated. Um, I'm just uh, very grateful to see the results and the fruit of, uh, you know, people who buy it. And um, so, so yeah, I mean, Kevin, you can maybe explain a bit further. Uh, yeah. So, me. I mean, from, uh, oops, sorry. I was on the, the I, I went to click through, but I, it went to that article that you'd mentioned before. Sorry, I got distracted. Um, but yeah, I've, <laughs> I've, I have, uh, jumped into it to see all the different things that he has in there. And it's just for anybody who is learning to, um, get into freelancing and you're not sure sort of where to start, or you're looking for advice or you've started and you're stuck. I do think it's a really, a really cool resource. As you said, there's a community involved in it. Um, there's looking at how to sell your services. There's more information, uh, on proposals, um, search engine optimization. I mean, there's tons of really, I think good stuff in there and just chatting with you now we've been here for just over an hour and you've already dropped a lot of a lot of knowledge on us so i think that you know it gives an idea of the types of things that you could get in there um and it's also useful i think because you're helping out with like some templates as well for getting started on invoicing and, and mm -hmm. other things like that and we've covered a lot of topics i've taken a ton of your time already so i really really appreciate it um mm -hmm. i'll just is there anything that you think we missed or any general advice that you might have uh just to close things out um, well, I, I, I mean, I don't know who's still with us or who still will watch up to, you know, the, up to the end part, but, but if you joined us as far, you know, thank you. Um, well done. <laughs> um, um, but, um, uh, I, I think, um, you know, 
freelancing is is such an overwhelming broad um, topic you know and and the reason why I think it's complex is because uh, you're dealing with people in different areas of the world with different um, knowledge with different personalities with different comprehension skills with um, you know different resources different interests um, all, all of those things different backgrounds and all of that and 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 it's very difficult to almost give like a general answer uh, when it's almost you know personalized mm-hmm. you know to a degree if you really think of it so so um i think a lot of what we said is is quite broad um i mean i know for example just i mean in terms of pricing you know and value based pricing and all that there's so much more to say um which we didn't touch on which someone can say like whoa this is just too overwhelming and too complicated like I'm sticking to hourly, you know, <laughs> um, uh, you know, and 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 all of that for for many of the other things that that we spoke about. But um, I hope you took some form of um, value or some form of nuggets from from our conversation. And also, if you if you um, want some expanded knowledge, um, I mean, if you're not interested in the bundle, no problem at all. Um, I do have a lot of um, free content on the blog. And um, a very helpful content um, th- that I've heard from from others, um, and I-, I know that will help you, and it will expand on a lot of the topics that we discussed um, today. And there's obviously so much more to talk about, um, but uh, yeah, I just hope that within this like hour, hour and a half chat, that you know you got some value. So I really hope you like that. If you do want to check out that bundle, the link to it is down below. If you want to check it out, if you follow that link, you will get a nice little discount and it is an affiliate link, so it also helps support my channel. And if you enjoyed this interview and you want to see more perspectives of other freelancers, I've done several interviews like this. The playlist for it is right here for your viewing pleasure. With those interviews, each person has a completely different perspective on the freelancing thing, which is really cool. So so if you are looking to get into freelancing, check that out. And with that, a really big thank you to Stuart and Randy her my supporters of awesome over on Patreon, as well as all my other patrons for the monthly support. And of course, until next time, don't forget to make your corner on the internet just a little bit more awesome.